What's up, fellow tech geeks? Welcome to Bauer Power. Charlie asks, any chance you could do another tutorial on the washer? No problemo, amigo. Today we're going to flash a Sonoff S31 smart plug with Tasmoda and add it to Home Assistant using MQTT and some automations so we get notifications when the washer is done. Stick around. Alright, here's what you're going to need for this project. A Sonoff S31 smart plug, a small screwdriver, an FTDI adapter, some jump wires, some solder and stuff, the Tasmoda binary file, can't forget the strippers, <laughs> oh, yeah. and of course, coffee. Alright, let's get started. Fortunately for us, the Amazon Prime guy just brought us a new Sonoff. And here comes some impromptu unboxing action. These S31s are so universal and they give you so much data to work with, I love them. But I personally wouldn't use them without flashing on a custom firmware. I just don't like the cloud and there's no reason a company in China needs to know when I'm turning my lights on and off and what I'm using for energy. Alright, let's bust this bad boy open. Just pry the end off, slide back the corners, and unscrew the three screws. When I solder these, I like to use the case as a stand, like so. Now we gotta slap some solder on the pad so we can get some wires to stick. Go ahead and prep the wires. It's easiest to solder them if they're all separate. Don't mess around with trying to keep them all in a group. It really doesn't have to be pretty as long as there's a path for electrons to flow. A lot of people will say you should tin the ends of the wires with solder, but that isn't really important either as long as they stick temporarily. And on the Sonoff, there's two receive and transmit pads for some reason. Uh, just use the receive and transmit pads closest to the voltage, the VCC. Once the wires are soldered on the pads, I like to wrap the wires with electrical tape just to keep them supported and prevent any kind of shorts. Next, we got to connect it to the FTDI adapter. Uh, make sure that the FTDI adapter switch is set to 3.3 volts. That's what the Sonoff requires. When connecting the wires, connect the ground to ground, voltage to voltage, and swap the receive and transfer so that the little guys can talk to each other. In other words, receive goes to transmit and transmit goes to receive. Once it's connected to the FTDI adapter, when you plug it into the USB, you gotta hold that button on the end. I usually hold it for about five seconds just to make sure. It puts it into flashing mode. And if you did it right, in your flashing utility, the COM port should show up. Now in order to flash, you gotta have the Tasmoda binary file. So go to the Tasmoda website and download the latest bin. And in your flash utility, once you got the file downloaded, click on the little gear icon and navigate to the Tasmoda binary you just downloaded. Ensure that checkbox is clicked or it won't work. If you need a flash utility, there's a link down in the description for the one that I'm using. There's also links for all the items that you'll need for this project too. There are Amazon affiliate links, so if you use the links that I provided, uh, I'll get a commission and you'll support the channel. So thanks for your support if you use them. And once you got your flash utility all set up, uh, click on flash in the operation tab and it'll do its magic. Once Tasmoda is finished flashing, uh, you got to reset the sewn off, so just unplug the USB and then plug it right back in. Now it's time to configure Tasmoda. In order to do that, you got to disconnect from your internet temporarily, and you'll see the Wi Fi SSID that says Tasmoda. Connect to that, and once you're connected, go back to your browser and type in the IP address 192.168.4.1. That's the address for all unconfigured Tasmodas. First thing we got to do is get it on your Wi Fi. You can either type in your SSID or scan for it. If you scan for it like I did, just click on your SSID, type your password, and click Save. 
Once it reboots, the IP address we used before won't work because it's on your network now. At this point, you'll have to figure out its IP address. Usually it's easiest to go to your Wi-Fi router configuration and look at your connected devices and you should see a Tasmoda show up in there. And it should show the IP address for it. And you'll obviously have to reconnect to your Wi-Fi too if it didn't do it automatically. Usually it does once the Tasmoda SSID drops off. Once you navigate to the Tasmoda's IP address, it'll bring up the configuration window. As tempting as it might be, don't click that toggle yet because it's only connected to USB voltage, not mains voltage. So I heard the bad things can happen. And in any case, it won't work anyway, so no point to do it. Click on Configuration and then Configure Module, and then we're going to tell it what kind of module it is. You'll want to select the Sonoff S31 from the dropdown. Click Save and the Sonoff will reboot. Now that Tasmoda knows what it's looking at, it can give us all that glorious data. Next, we need to configure MQTT so that Home Assistant can pick it up. In the MQTT configuration, under Host, type the IP address for your Home Assistant server. Set your MQTT username and password, and click Save. Now we'll tell it how often to update Home Assistant by configuring the polling. Click Logging and change the telemetry period to 30 seconds or whatever works best for you. Second to lastly, click Configure Other to set a device name and a friendly name. And the last thing we got to do in here is to go to the console and set option 19 to true. Option 19 turns on auto discovery in Home Assistant for the device. That way it just pops up automatically in your entities. Now that TAS mode is all configured, you can go ahead and put the Sonoff right back together. Remove the tape, desolder the wires, and reassemble it the opposite as you disassembled it. Everything should fall back into place easily. You don't force anything. You end up breaking it or bending something. Putting the button plate back on can be kind of a pain in the butt, but I found that if you start from one side and kind of rock it into place and then snap it in, that seems to work pretty well. Once reassembled, you can plug it into the wall and plug in your washing machine. Restart Home Assistant and it should show up under Devices. And would you just look at all them new entities? In order to figure out what your washer is doing during a wash cycle, go ahead and wash a load of clothes. Then we can look at the data to figure out the cycles. Because every geek loves data. Here's a graph of my wash cycle. Looking at it, it's pretty easy to see when it changes from one step to the next. We can use these measurements to build our automations. To have a sensor tell you what the washer state is instead of just the power usage, create an MQTT dummy sensor by adding this code to your config.yaml file. Our automations will update this sensor with the current washer state as it washes clothes. To do this, I created an automation for each stage of the wash cycle, using the previous stage as a condition and the change in power usage as the trigger. Then for the action, call the MQTT publish service to send a message to the topic that you set for your washing machine dummy sensor. The payload will be whatever text you want your sensor state to change to, and setting a retain to true makes it remember the state until it's changed again. Create one of these automations for each stage and another one to return it back to idle from finished after there's been no power drawn for a few minutes and it'll be ready to repeat the loop again next time you wash a load of clothes. Looks like the washing machine is finished. Well, there you have it. This video has been quite the adventure, but I hope it helps somebody make their dumb washer smart. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more geeky automation stuff from me. And remember, everybody's a little weird, but there's only one you, so be yourself. Thanks for watching.